Six, and welcome to the 13th meeting of the Health and Sport Committee of 2019. Can I ask everyone in the room please to ensure that mobile phones are off or on silent uh, and uh, not to use uh, mobile devices for photography or recording. Uh, items one and two of our agenda this morning are consideration of an instrument related to the European Union Withdrawal Act 2018. The instrument is the Public Health and Tobacco EU Exit Scotland Amendment Regulations 2019. The purpose of these regulations is to make minor technical uh, changes which are required to correct legislative deficiencies that will arise as a consequence of the UK leaving the EU. Uh, we will first of all consider the categorisation of the instrument uh, under agenda item one. Colleagues will be familiar with the protocol agreed between the Scottish Government and the Scottish Parliament on categorisation of SSIs laid under the European Union Withdrawal Act. Uh, which sets out an approach for that categorisation and gives a role particularly to the Delegated Power, Powers and Law Reform Committee in highlighting to the lead committee where there is an issue around categorisation. Uh, the SSI in this case has been categorised as medium and the Scottish Government has identified the negative procedure as appropriate for this instrument. The DPLR Committee considered the SSI at its meeting on the 30th of April and agreed that it was laid under the appropriate procedure and given the appropriate categorisation and had no, no matters they wished to draw uh, to the attention of this committee um, uh, on that matter. Members are therefore invited to agree if we are content that the procedure and categorisation given to the instrument by the Scottish Government is appropriate. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Agenda item two, therefore, is to consider this negative instrument on our agenda. The Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee determined that it did not need to draw the attention of the Parliament to this instrument on any grounds within its remit when it considered it on the 30th of April. Uh, are there any uh, comments that any members may have on this instrument? If not, uh, are, is the committee agreed to make no more recommendations? That's agreed. Thank you very much. We therefore move on to agenda item number three which is continued consideration or consideration at stage two of the Human Tissue Authorisation uh, Scotland Bill. I welcome the Minister for Public Health, Sport and Wellbeing, Joe Fitzpatrick. Good morning. Uh, he's accompanied variously by Sharon Grant from the Bill team, Jackie Pantoni and Claire Montgomery from the Legal Directorate uh, and Max McGill from the Parliamentary Council Office. Now I understand members uh, of the team will come and go according to the uh, led, uh, the, the particular items in front of us. Uh, can I also welcome Jeremy Balfour, who is joining us this morning and has amendments in his name. And I uh, believe Gordon Lindhurst will join us for the same purpose uh, later this morning. Uh, I will explain the procedure briefly once again, because uh, it's the first consideration of this bill. There will be one debate on each group of amendments. I will call the a member who lodged the first amendment in that group to speak to and move that amendment and to speak to all the other amendments in the group. And I will then call uh, any other members who have lodged amendments in that group. Uh, other members may, of course, uh, catch my eye and indicate their intention uh, to speak on the group. Uh, and I will then, if he has not already moved an amendment, I will then call on the minister to contribute just before asking the member who has moved uh, the amendment to wind up. And I will then conclude that debate by inviting the member who moved the First Amendment in the group to wind up. Uh, I will then ask whether the, that member wishes to press the amendment to a vote or to withdraw it. And if, if he or she wishes to press ahead, I will put the question on that amendment. And uh, clearly, if a member wishes to withdraw an amendment after it has been moved, that member must seek the agreement of other members to do so and any member present may object and therefore require a vote on that. Uh, and as I say, if no one moves an amendment, uh, if any other member wishes may move an amendment, failing that, I will move on to the next amendment. Voting is by members of the committee only, uh, and voting in any division is by show of hands. And if there are divisions, again, I would ask members to uh, uh, indicate their intention clearly uh, and for long enough for their vote to be recorded. Thank you very much. Um, we will move directly uh, to, to stage two. And uh, if we are successful in completing it today, that would be clearly a good thing. Uh, if we are not successful in completing stage two today, 
then the uh, bill will be reprinted first thing tomorrow morning and uh, further amendments can then be lodged. However, let's press on. Uh, and we start, because there are no amendments in Section 1, the first question for the committee is that Section 1 of the bill be agreed. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. I therefore, therefore move on to the first group of amendments in the, uh, uh, on, on the bill, and that is covering the area of information and awareness. And I will call uh, Amendment 4 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, uh, which is grouped with Amendments 56, 57, 7, 8 and 63. Now, before Jeremy Balfour uh, moves his first amendment, members should note that Amendments 7 and 8 are direct alternatives to each other. Uh, which means uh, that both can be decided upon. If both were to be agreed, then it was the last one agreed that would be uh, would would apply. Um, uh, but clearly, that is a matter for members uh, to consider when they come to these matters. Can I ask Jeremy Balfour to move Amendment Four and speak to all amendments in this group? Uh, thank you, Commissioner. And, and good morning, uh, Commissioner Committee and, and Minister. Um, can I say at the start, I think this is a really helpful bill, um, and one bill that I think has got all party support. And the amendments I'm seeking to bring forward uh, this morning in my name um, seek to strengthen this bill and hopefully uh, make it work uh, better. Um, amendment four, I think for me, is the, the key amendment that I'm putting forward uh, this morning. And that is in regard to the whole issue of informed consent. And um, I think one of the uh, positives, real positives of this bill is that it, it will hopefully kickstart a debate in Scotland around organ donation and so that families, individuals will be able to have better conversations so that when someone gets to a situation that uh, they can, they are dead and they can donate that, those organs, then uh, the family is better informed. Um, clearly the evidence in Wales has been quite positive around that in that before they introduced their bill and became an act, uh, the public awareness was fairly small and that has uh, increased um, quite highly um, since the Act has become, and I think that's a very positive thing. Um, I'm also aware that Scottish Government have committed to putting quite a, a lot of resource when this becomes an Act, so that there will be advertising, TV, etc. I, I suppose the question for me is, how do we keep this conversation going uh, over the next five, ten years? Um, I think there's a danger that there's a, a high take-up initially. People understand what is going on, but as other things come onto our agenda, as other things move on, it becomes less well-known. And I think if we are generally going to have informed consent, it has to be informed. Um, obviously, people who are 16 plus now will be part of that campaign, but there will be people coming behind that in years who may not be aware of what's going on. And so Amendment 4 uh, really very simply puts a commitment onto the Scottish Government to say that every two years there should be some kind of communication with the people in Scotland. Now, I'm not suggesting that that has to be an individual letter to each person. Um, what could work quite well would be if there was other communication going out, your council tax, other forms, that a, on a second-year basis, that information would go out and people would be aware. I think the advantage of that, from my perspective, is that it simply allows the debate to continue over the next four, five, ten years. Um, it also means that those who are turning 16 um, will also be aware of it, because, again, those who are, say, in their 8, 10, 11 at the moment, it will be a number of years before we reach that time, and will they be informed about the decisions that they are asking to make? So I'm, I'm, I would be interested to know what Scottish Government's view and the committee's view is around this, but I think one of the keys of this bill is informed consent, and we need to make sure that informed consent is not just for now, but going forward. That leads me on to Amendment 7 and 8. As the Katrina said, these um, give two options, um, a two-year or a three-year. This, I suppose, relates to those who are coming not from the UK, but from other parts of the world, whether it's Europe or other parts of the world. At the moment, you have one year uh, before you would um, enter into the system if you come from a different jurisdiction. 
I suppose, again, my question is around informed consent. If I pitch up from Australia uh, into Scotland <coughs> and uh, I, I'm getting myself part of a country, is this something that's going to come onto my radar within the first 12 months? And I'm not convinced that it is. Now, I do accept that the, the Welsh have gone for a 12-month, and I think at the moment the legislation for England is also the same. But I don't think that necessarily means that we have to follow suit. I think we have to be comfortable in ourselves that there is deemed authority, and that that authority comes from an informed situation for the individual. So I would suggest that um, a slightly longer period than one year is required for that individual to, to know what's going on and then maybe to have the appropriate conversations with his relatives or her relatives um, in other parts of the world. Uh, I will leave it there, convener. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Balfour. Uh, colleagues, I have tabled two amendments in this group. Uh, these follow discussions uh, that I had particularly with the Law Society around uh, what might be the most appropriate format for addressing some of the issues, and some of the issues include those that Jeremy Balfour has raised. In particular, Amendment 56 ensures that the duty to promote information and awareness is continuous and uh, that the Minister should promote awareness on a, at least an annual basis, once every calendar year. Uh, and Amendment 63 amendment, amends the Bill in, a, in order to uh, allow a two-year information and awareness period before commencement uh, of, the, uh, of the Act. These are joined together, but of course they need not uh, uh, go through together, but they are both uh, intended to achieve the same objective of allowing uh, a, an adequate level of information and awareness in advance of the implementation of the Bill. Uh, can I invite David Stewart to speak to Amendment 57 and also to other amendments in <coughs> Um, thank you, convener, and can I thank the Minister for the meeting that we had to discuss the generality of uh, the amendments. Uh, the, the wider issue, Jeremy Balfour has said, is uh, that I am, and then Labour are very supportive the, about the general principles um, of the Bill, but I think there's opportunities to <coughs> strengthen uh, the Bill through some amendments. So I'm speaking to and moving Amendment 57 in my name. So Amendment 57 is an addition to Section 3 of the Bill, which concerns the maintenance of the register. At stage one, it was clear to the committee that this assess the bill and achieving an increase in organ donations would rest on individuals making clear uh, that their wishes were explicit. So Amendment 57 therefore seeks to make the process easier and more commonplace. It places an obligation on the Scottish Ministers in the maintenance of the register to consider and promote regular opportunities for individuals to make clear their intentions for their organs or to alter their stated wishes regarding the donation of their organs. In particular, subsection 2 requires Scottish Ministers to consider how such opportunities can be made available through already existing interactions that inter individuals have with the NHS and health services. Such interactions could include, um, uh, but would uh, not be exclusive uh, to the times that individual uh, registers with a GP or attends clinic appointments. The purpose being that when individuals are asked to confirm their deals by an NHS service, this should include confirmation of their wishes regarding organ donation. Uh, within the group, although I'm sympathetic to the intention behind Amendment 4 and the need to inform <coughs> the public of changes the bill makes, I believe it to be too resource intensive. I'm also concerned that linking to the electoral register would allow those who are not registered to fall through the gaps. And there's also possible practical problems relating to those who do not wish their address to be used for purposes other than voter registration. So I consider Amendment 56 to be a better alternative which satisfies the tension behind Amendment 4 but does not limit the potential audience who may be reached and could be delivered more efficiently. Thank you very much. Can I invite, uh, before I invite the Minister, can I invite other members who may have comments? Alex uh, Colhampton, followed by Emma Harper. Thank you, Convener. Just to uh, welcome Jeremy Balfour to the committee. Thank you for moving your amendments. I won't be supporting them today. Whilst I do support the intent of Amendment 4, I do agree with David Stewart that they, uh, it would be resource intensive and there would be potential to miss certain um, very key and vulnerable people in our society out altogether. Also, I think there's something um, counterproductive in attaching something as positive about, um, as information about organ donation to a council tax demand or something like that, when as actually uh, the amendment in the convener's name around an annual sort of uh, publicity or media um, buy-in from the Scottish Government might uh, 
lend an air of celebration to what is should be a, a very positive development in public policy. So we won't be supporting Jeremy's amendments, but we will be supporting the convener and David Stewart's amendment. Thank you very much. Emma Hopper. <coughs> Thank you, Convener. Good morning to everyone. And again, thank you, Jeremy Balfour, for bringing your amendments forward. Um, as a <coughs> former liver transplant nurse who has performed kidneys and pancreas transplants also, I uh, have an input that might be different than normal members into this process. I absolutely support the idea that we need to provide informed consent for everybody and raise awareness of this process and the presumed consent uh, and opt in, opt out as this bill moves forward. And I am really keen to make sure that we do raise awareness with schools and encourage families and conversations to occur. I agree with Alec Cole Hamilton and Dave, Dave Stewart that it would be resource intensive to implement a process such as the amendments by Jeremy Balfour. But I would be interested to hear from the minister how we would monitor um, engagement and uptake and uh, people adding their names to the organ donation register. I'm aware that in Spain, they don't even have an organ donation register because through this whole process, they have uh, it has become the norm for people to donate their organs and tissues. So they don't even have an organ donation register. So I am keen to uh, <coughs> support the uh, amendments that the, uh, with the government in this issue. Thank you very much. Uh, Miles Briggs. Thank you, Convener. Good morning um, to the panel and welcome my colleague Jeremy Balfour. And I suppose this is more a question for the Minister as well, because in terms of the guidance um, which will be attached to the actual bill, I was wondering where the direction of travel was going in terms of public information around this bill, because I think um, I, I completely accept what my colleague uh, Jeremy Balfour has tried to bring forward with Amendment 4. Um, but I do think it's maybe limiting in terms of a letter. So I was wondering in terms of a future of the bill where that public information campaigns would be as we move towards obviously far more uh, digitalization of health information thank you very much uh, sandra white thank you very much convener i thank jeremy balfour for for moving his amendment but i do agree with dave stewart and alex cole hamilton that the convener's one uh, for me is uh, much better worded and one year is is much better in that respect uh, i just have some concerns over seven and eight which uh, Jeremy Malfour has put forward. Uh, I'm concerned that um, basically moving it from 12 months to two years, then 12 months to three years uh, before consent can be given uh, is a bit concerning, uh, not just for you know organ transplants, but perhaps the person involved also. So I have a concern in that respect. And in Dave Stewart's particular one, I, I just wonder if that would cause uh, extra work or whatever it may be. Uh, basically, people have registered. Um, I presume that people can say whether they wish their name to be on it or taken off it, and maybe it's a bit of duplication. So that, that's just my thoughts on it. Perhaps the Minister could clarify that point. Or Jeremy on the, the 7 and 8. Thank you very much. If there are no other members wishing to contribute at this stage, can I invite the Minister, please? Thank you, Convener. Um, convener, Amendment 56 would mean that as part of their duties in respect to transplantation and donation, the Scottish Ministers should have a campaign of awareness and information at least once every calendar year. Amendment 57 sets out a duty on Scottish Ministers to promote regular opportunities for persons to make, a review, make or review their decision to donate or not to donate and to consider how such opportunities can be provided when a person is receiving healthcare services. Under the 2006 Act, the Scottish Ministers have a duty to promote information and awareness about donation for transplantation. New Section 1D of the Act, set out in Section 2 of the Bill, will add to this by also requiring Scottish Ministers to promote information and awareness about how authorisation for transplantation may be given, including deemed authorisation. Awareness raising carried out in accordance with the duty will make clear to people that their choices are... <coughs> and what their choices are and what the implications uh, of the new system will be. One of the strengths of the 2006 Act has been the duty on Scottish Ministers to promote awareness and information about donation. As a result of the importance placed on this by successive administrations and the evidence-based approach to awareness raising, efforts to fulfil the duty have resulted in high public awareness of donations in Scotland. 
This has been demonstrated by year-on-year -year increases in people recording a decision on the organ donor register. The duty is fulfilled in a range of ways, from specific targeted initiatives with different groups of the population to high-profile media campaigns. Awareness raising is ongoing, for example, the, from promotion at, <clears throat> at public sporting or entertainment events to information provided in GP surgeries, pharmacies and other public areas, similar to the request that David Stewart was making for his amendment. In addition, information is given through different media and social media activities, which happen regularly throughout the year. We will build on this as we raise awareness specifically about the opt-out system. As well as the broad awareness raising, it's crucial that we undertake work to reach specific groups. We've committed to working with different groups, including disability groups and faith groups, to reach, to research, develop and test clear and accessible information, which will also be available in a range of languages. And I know the committee has made <clears throat> a number of helpful suggestions in this area. We're also committed to learning from Wales about its engagement strategy, particularly regarding reaching minority groups and officials are in regular dialogue with English counterparts and developments there. We will continue to work with Kidney Research UK, who will provide updated training for peer educators in order to raise awareness of donation amongst South Asian communities. There will also be a specific work to target young people. I think a point made by Mr Balfour. We'll uh, be updating the secondary schools education pack and as previously we'll work with Education Scotland to do so. We're also looking at ways to identify um, ways in which we can inform young people of the law shortly before they reach their 16th birthday and continue to keep them informed on an ongoing basis. And the financial uh, memorandum of, to the bill takes that into account. Our intention, backed up by the new duty in section two of the bill is that regular awareness raising about the opt-out system will be a priority and opportunities will continue to be taken to promote information and understanding of the opt-out system and the choices under it. This will also be supported by um, monitoring changes in public attitudes, I think a point raised by um, uh, the Deputy Convener, um, and awareness as part of the planned evaluation of the opt-out system, which means that we can be responsive if there is a need to adapt that approach. I support the principles of Amendment 56 to have a campaign of awareness and information at least once every calendar year, and I'm happy to recommend it to be accepted today. However, I do think the, it would be preferable, given the crossover between the provisions already in the Bill and the, the amendment uh, and the duties which are already in the Bill, um, uh, so that we should probably uh, refine some of that text um, uh, at stage three, and I'd be happy to work with the member before stage three to achieve this. I want to thank David Stewart uh, for bringing forward Amendment 57. I hope I've been able to provide reassurance on, on our continuing commitment to use every opportunity to raise awareness, and in particular, about the new system. Consider the duties in the bill um, and ongoing practice already meet the intentions of this amendment and therefore ask David Stewart to withdraw Amendment 57 in the light of the discussions that I'll be having with the, hopefully having with the convener in relation to his amendment, I would be happy to also um, meet with David Stewart to make sure that any uh, refinement of um, um, the, the convener's uh, amendment would take into account the, the, the points and to, 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 that, he, that he's raising as well, if there are any that he considers are still um, missing by, by not passing that amendment, so I'd, I'd ask him to consider um, uh, not, not uh, moving his amendment. Turn now to Amendment 4, which requires Scottish ministers to send information at least once in every two-year period to um, persons registered on the electoral roll. In light of the intended awareness raising um, and the general approach I've outlined, while I appreciate the aim, I consider this amendment to, may be limiting. Even if the law allowed access to the electoral register for this purpose, and I understand that it does not, it would not reach those who had decided not to be included, uh, to include their details on the electoral roll, as um, has already been mentioned. In addition, the proposal would have a high cost, which is estimated around £2.5 million every two years at the current rates, and this would have an effect on reducing the ability um, of Scottish ministers to raise awareness in, in other ways. As I've said, the uh, awareness raising work we undertake is based on evidence of what works, what works best. Um, I don't want to inadvertently limit ourselves to being required to use specific awareness raising methods when they may not be the most effective. 
As well as the awareness raising methods I've outlined, I'd like to reassure Mr Balfour that within the 12 month period there will be a direct mailing to all households, which means that even if someone was not on the electoral roll, they would have access to the information. And again, that is accounted for in the financial memorandum. On that basis, um, I ask Jenny, Jen, Jeremy Balfour to consider withdrawing Amendment 4. Now turn to Amendments 7 and 8 which provide direct alternatives to increasing the length of time that a person needs to be ordinarily resident in Scotland before deemed authorisation for transplantation applies to either two or three years. I appreciate that Mr Balfour is concerned that people newly resident in Scotland may be subject to deemed authorisation when they may not be aware of the system. When developing the bill, uh, the need for protection of certain groups of people who might not be aware of or understand deemed authorisation was a key consideration. The ordinarily resident requirement is part of those protections and the required duration of 12 months is in line um, with the legislation in Wales and England, as Mr Balfour said. Establishing what is a sufficient length of time to live in Scotland before deemed authorisation applies is, of course, a balance, and Mr Balfour's amendment seeks to lengthen that period to either two or three years. The proposal in the Transplantation Authorisation of Removal of Organs etc Scotland Bill introduced by Anne McTaggart in the last bill was for a period of six months and this committee considered that to be an insufficient period and recommended that it be increased to 12 months. So um, I do appreciate there will be a difference of views on what is appropriate and I think we should all accept that. I am however not persuaded that the duration should be increased. Um, I think a 12 month residency requirement which has been in place um, in Wales since 2015 and we're not aware of any difficulties arising from the approach there. Additionally, the bill contains safeguards which aim to ensure that donation does not proceed where it would be against the wishes of the potential donor. This includes um, the uh, uh, awareness raising duties which seek to ensure that this is a uh, public awareness about the implications of the new system and the duty to inquire, which applies in all cases and seeks to ensure that the views of the potential donor um, will establish whether or not donation is authorised. I hope the information um, I've already outlined about awareness raising provides assurances on this point. Specifically in terms of people newly resident, we're looking at what was undertaken in Wales. This includes utilising various channels of awareness raising, including through new GP, GP registrations, universities, state agents and major employers. This type of activity would supplement the broader ongoing awareness raising campaign. I hope this provides, again, reassurance that the system includes sufficient safeguards alongside the awareness raising work and therefore the residency requirement duration of 12 months in the bill as introduced should be retained. On that basis, I ask Mr Balfour not to move amendments 7 and 8 and, if moved, would urge members to resist. Finally, turning to amendment 63, which would prevent the opt-out system from being implemented before a two-year awareness raising period um, has been carried out beginning from Royal Assent. We've always been clear that there needs to be a high profile public information campaign over at least 12 months before commencement of the system. I was pleased to see that the committee recommended and um, well welcomed this commitment at stage one in its report. Um, this approach was also proposed in the Scottish Government's consultation and attracted significant support. I understand there was a similar requirement um, to that proposed in this amendment in the Welsh legislation. However, there is already a greater deal of exposure about opt-out since then. There have been many conversations in Scotland over the past few years about introducing opt-out, including in this Parliament. And most recently, England has embarked on an awareness raising campaign which will run over 12 months. I also want to uh, reassure members that while we've committed to a specific awareness raising campaign of at least 12 months before the introduction of opt-out, that is not limiting. I'm grateful for Mr Macdonald for taking the time to discuss his amendment with me and I'm happy to give the assurance that in addition to the 12-month campaign, we also intend to provide information about the move to a new system in a variety of ways starting as soon as the bill receives royal assent. As I've said, I'm pleased to see the committee welcomes the government commitment to have a high-profile awareness raising campaign. I'm satisfied that the awareness raising duties in the bill, along with the commitment made by the Scottish Government, including awareness raising over at least 12 months, supports the aims of the bill and will ensure that people are aware of the new system and their choices within it. So while I agree that there needs to be awareness raising, I hope members will agree um, and the additional assurances that I've given today that on balance, we have the balance right and would ask Lewis MacDonald uh, not to move Amendment 63. If the amendment is moved, I would ask 
invite members to reject it. Thank you very much, Minister. And I can, can I now go to Jeremy Balfour to wind up and press or withdraw his amendment. Uh, thank Number you, Camilla. And can I thank uh, the debate that we've had? I think it's been very helpful. And I think the comments by the Minister particularly have been uh, particularly helpful. I mean, I think I would slightly caveat uh, the Minister's views that I'm not sure the public are as aware as perhaps you said in your opening statement. And I do think there does need to be work um, in regard to the amendments, I do actually think Amendment 56 achieves more than I would be looking to achieve, and so I'm willing to withdraw Amendment 4, and I would personally ask the committee to support Amendment 56 um, and make that commitment. Um, I will withdraw both Amendment 7 and 8 at this stage, but I may ask the Minister if we could just look at what information particularly is given to somebody who arrives in this country from abroad when we visit the GP, because most people will probably be at their GP within a year or, to register. And at that point, if they were given an appropriate letter of information, I think that would be some comfort. Um, I would also just maybe ask the Minister to reflect before we get to stage three again on whether, um, and I appreciate the cost going out for two years, but whether a letter could go to every 16-year-old child who would be at school, which would be part of the pack that we might get when we're leaving school, so it wouldn't have any extra cost. It would simply be something that a child would get. Um, and that may just, again, start the debate within the school as well as uh, beyond that. Um, so, uh, with your permission, Convener, I will withdraw my amendment for 7 and 8. We will come back to 7 and 8 uh, in due course, but uh, uh, the proposal at this point is that amendment 4 be withdrawn. Is uh, our members content? that Amendment 4 be withdrawn. We then come to Amendment 56. In my name, already debated with Amendment 4. I note the Ministers uh, and acknowledge the Ministers offered to discuss this further and advance to Stage 3. Uh, and on that basis, I move Amendment 56. The question is that Amendment 56 uh, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, the question then is that Section 2 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. We then move to the next grouping, which relates to accepted body parts. Uh, this is, uh, uh, again, an amendment in the name of Jeremy Balfour, Amendment 5. It is grouped uh, with Amendment 6, Amendments 9 to 17 inclusive, and Amendments 19 to 23 inclusive. Uh, can I ask Jeremy Balfour to move Amendment 5 and speak to all the amendments in the group? Um, uh, thank you, Kavina. Um, I suppose the... Uh, amendment in regard to making sure tissue is not used to create reproductive cells in research is again just to highlight that I think when we're talking about this bill, everyone is talking about organ um, transfers, which obviously is something that we are all very keen to see. But beyond this, there is the issue around um, tissue and how tissue could be used. And uh, my understanding, and I'm open to the Minister to comment on this, is that there is, um, at the moment within the bill, a tissue could be take, taken and used for research, such as reproductive cells, artificial sperm or eggs, um, or use different tissues from the body to create human embryos for research. Now, I think that goes beyond what is understood by most people to be within this bill. And I think there is an ethical difference between creating that type of tissues compared to a kidney or a heart transport, plant, transplant. So I really am just seeking the Minister's understanding of whether that is right, um, and if it is, does uh, the government and this committee uh, believe that is something that we want to move down ethically? Uh, the other um, amendments um, all deal with the, the difference between um, non-exempt body parts and exempt body parts. Uh, from my understanding, this is a terminology that is not found in any other part of uh, Acts, either within Wales or within the rest of uh, the world. And again, I'm open to correction of, of that. Uh, for me, there should be no difference between um, ex accepted and non-accepted body parts. I, I think we should be, again, encouraging people to use all parts of their body for transportation, uh, for, for, for trans for transplantation. And again, I think I would just want to understand where the government is coming from from drawing up these two types of different lists. Because from my understanding, that doesn't happen in Wales 
and, and I'd be interested to know why we think this should happen in Scotland. Thank you, Camina. Thank you very much. Uh, can I ask if other members wish to speak? I know the Minister will. Um, Emma Harper. Thank you, Convener. I, again, I am interested in this because of the, the, we have had discussions about this. It's not just about organ transplantation, solid organs. It's about tissue as well. And tendons and heart valves are quite common as tissues that are transplanted. But there are people that do freak out when you talk about face transplants and other as well. But which doesn't really happen in this country, but there is continued research and development, and I am aware that there are other organ transplantations that are in trial, like uterus in Wales. And for me, there's issues around pancreatic transplants and the obtaining of islet cells. So we need to allow people time to engage in the in understanding of what it is we're talking about when we mean organ and tissue, and most folk do understand the common solid organ transplants of heart, lung, liver, kidney. So I think the distinction is warranted to show that we, we don't want to restrict the transplantation of other tissue, but we don't want people to not opt in because they might be subject to being uh, afraid of what might be tissue that's uh, applied to them and their families. Thank you very much. Any other members who wish to contribute? If not, can I invite the Minister to respond to this group? Minister. Thank you. The effect of these amendments would be to remove a protection from the Bill. The Bill, as introduced, um, includes an exemption so that deemed authorisation does not apply to accepted body parts. The Bill includes provision for regulations to specify what the category of accepted body parts includes, and these will be subject to the affirmative procedure and, and subject to consultation. The intention, as outlined in the Scottish Government's consultation, is that deemed authorisation will apply only to those organs and tissues that are commonly transplanted. These are, are, are the organs and tissues that most people might commonly understand as being able to be donated, including kidney, heart, lungs and liver. The intention is that all, all body parts, aside from these commonly transplanted, transplanted ones, the accepted body parts will be listed in regulations and will be exempt from deemed authorisation. And that is the same approach uh, as is being taken elsewhere. And, and um, it's a regulation within the Welsh le legislation that, that, that lays down the list. Um, as well as, as this exemption, deemed authorisation applies only in relation to transplantation, not to research. Uh, again, uh, a point Mr Balfour was, was making. And no body parts can be used for research purpose without explicit authorisation. Amendment um, 9 and 10 remove the category of accepted body parts and instead include a protection only in relation to parts of the body which contain reproductive cells or are to be used for reproductive purposes. The effect of this is that parts of the body which is intended would be excluded bo body parts would, under this amendment, be able to be removed and transplanted under deemed authorisation. So I think to get to Mr Balfour's point, I, I'm a, a, a very much a supporter of organ duration and, and I've opted in to say that, that I'm content for all of my body parts to be used um, after my, my death, if, if I was to die in such circumstances that they could be used. Um, and, but this bill does not assume that that would be covered under deemed authorisation if it's not commonly expected as, as the commonly transplanted organ. So I, I guess there, there's the slight difference. And I think it, it makes the point about how the organ donor register remains very important within this legislation. Um, so I mentioned earlier that, that there, there is a list in, in Wales um, and the respective list in Wales includes such body parts as the face and hands. Um, I don't think it's common public understanding that these parts of the body would be donated and transplanted. And I think it's appropriate that we provide the safeguards so that it's clear to the public what the limit limitations of deemed authorisation are. I understand Mr Balfour's concerns in relation to reproductive cells um, and body parts not being part of deemed authorisation for transplantation. As I've said, the government's intention is to ensure that only that material which is publicly commonly, under, commonly understood to be routinely donated should be part of deemed authorisation. And I don't think uh, the material these amendments relate to would fall within that. The list um, in Wales includes the types of material these amendments relate to, for example, ovary, uterus, penis, testicle. 
Subject to consultation and this Parliament's view, it's expected that the list of expect, uh, accepted body parts here will be very similar. Um, I'd propose that the accepted body parts regulations are the vehicle to limit the parameters of, which, of what can be donated under deemed authorisation and on that basis urge Jeremy Balfour to withdraw these amendments. Mr Balfour specifically asked, um, I think, some questions around um, GAT, GAT reproductive cells and, and how that would be covered under the bill. The, the procurement, storage and use of gametes or reproductive cells is dealt with under the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Act and requires a Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority licence. It's completely separate from the 2006 Act and this bill. Much, Minister. I now ask Jeremy Balfour to, to do two, two slightly different things, to wind up in the group as a whole and then to press or withdraw specifically Amendment 5. I have nothing to add, Convener, and I withdraw Amendment 5. Thank you very much. That amendment is withdrawn. The committee is so agreed. Uh, we therefore move on to the next group, which relates to the establishment and maintenance of the register. I call Amendment 24 in the name of the Minister, a group with Amendments 25 to 33. Minister, to move Amendment 24 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I'm bringing forward amendments 24 to 33 following further consideration about how the provisions of section 3 of the bill about disclosure of information by the register organisation uh, will work in practice. The amendments aim to more accurately reflect who information needs to be shared with, to clarify that the information disclosed must be about a particular potential donor and to refine the purposes for which information can be shared. New section 2C1A of the 2006 Act, as inserted by Amendment 25, restricts the powers of the register organisation to disclose information within Scotland to those carrying out functions under Part 1 of the 2006 Act. New Section 2C1B, also set out in Amendment 25, provides a power for the register organisation to disclose information to persons out with Scotland who are carrying out functions related to the removal and use of parts of the body for transplantation. The power to disclose information out with Scotland reflects the collaborative arrangements in which donation and transplantation services operate. New Section 2C1A would allow information to be shared within Scotland by the register organisation with those listed under Section 2C2 for particular purposes, but no longer directly with relatives of donors. In practice, there is only a need for the register organisation to disclose information to specific persons who are engaged in functions related to the removal and use of a part of the body for transplantation. Therefore, Amendment 27 reflects this by replacing the existing reference to health boards, etc., with a reference to these persons. Amendment 26 makes it clear that the register organisation's power to disclose information includes the power to disclose that there is no recorded information on the register. Within Scotland, this will, be support, this will support those undertaking the duty to inquire, allowing, for example, specialist nurses to have conversations with the family about the views of the donor. Amendments 28 and 29 have the effect that those listed in Section 2C2 can disclose information they receive from the register organisation to another person carrying out transplantation functions under Part 1 of the 2006 Act, as well as to relatives of the donor. For example... In practice, this would allow a specialist nurse for organ donation to share information with a retrieval surgeon that an authorisation for donation is in place so that, amongst other things, the retrieval surgeon can be satisfied that the um, requirements in Section 11 um, of the 2006 Act are fulfilled before retrieval takes place. Amendments 30 to 33 are consequential. I move Amendment 24. Thank you very much, Minister. Can I invite other members who wish to speak on this group of amendments to do so? Uh, are there other members who wish to uh, make comment? Uh, therefore, if not, uh, Minister, anything else you wish to add? I think I'm content. question then is that Amendment 24 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? I now call amendments 25, uh, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 and 33, all in the name of the Minister, all debated a moment ago with amendment 24. Can I invite the Minister to move these amendments on block? Moved on block. Thank you very much. Does any member object to a single question being put on these amendments? No. If no member objects, the question is that amendments 25 to 33 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Uh,
therefore call Amendment 57 in the name of David Stewart, already debated with Amendment 4. David Stewart to move or not to move? <coughs> uh, move. Uh, moved. The question is that Amendment 57 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We're not all agreed. There is therefore be a division. Can I see those in favour of Amendment 57? And can I see those against? That amendment is carried by five votes to four. Thank you very much. The question is that section three be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The question is that section four be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. We now move on to the next group, which is in relation to how authorization, declaration, or withdrawal is to be made. Uh, can I call Amendment 34 in the name of the Minister, which is grouped with Amendments 36, uh, 40 and 42? Minister. Thank you, Kavina. Um, I'll speak to all the amendments in this group which seek to enable a person to orally withdraw a decision they have given to the register organisation. At present, in Scotland, a person can withdraw their donation um, decision in writing only. Currently, when contacting the organ um, donor register helpline to withdraw a donation decision, Individuals in Scotland are advised that they can, this can only be done in writing, such as by changing their decision online on the organ donation register or, or writing to the organ donor register requesting the change. These amendments will provide flexibility as to how a person can have uh, a previously recorded decision withdrawn from the register and, and will bring Scotland in line with practice in the rest of the UK. NHSBT have welcomed the fact that through these amendments, callers to the organ donor register helpline from Scotland will not be required to be directed away from the call centre to withdraw decisions online or separately in writing. As a matter of good practice, any withdrawal of a recorded decision is followed up by the organ donor register in writing as confirmation. Convener, I move Amendment 34. Thank you very much. Can I invite other members to comment? Miles Briggs. Thank you. You know, um, this is more um, a point for clarity, um, to be quite frank. In terms of how um, an oral uh, withdrawal will actually be logged or recorded, um, can you provide more information on how that will, the actual procedure for someone to withdraw orally from, from consent? I, either the minister may intervene or we, um, he may respond once we've heard from other members. Are there any other members or... Um, uh, members attending the committee who wish to comment on uh, this group. Sandra White. Comment. This was one of the issues I raised under 57, which I thought was duplication of this. Uh, basically, I think it's important that people get the opportunity to see if they wish to continue or not. And I think uh, this Amendment 34 fills that gap, basically. So, very supportive of it. Thank you very much. Uh, are there other comments? Uh, I, I would concur that uh, this seems to be a useful uh, improvement in the bill, but very interested in the Minister's comments. Uh, uh, can I ask the Minister uh, to wind up, please? Yeah, just to, to respond to Mr Briggs's point, obviously this would bring us into line with practice in the rest of the UK, and I understand that the, the procedure there would be that a person would telephone the, the ODR, the ODR would then verify their ID, um, and, and that would then be followed up in writing. And, and, uh, so, it would just, so they would have one system for um, the whole of the UK. Obviously, the ODR um, holds register for the whole of the UK, but currently they have to have these two different systems where they have a system for the rest of the UK and um, for people from Scotland, they have to be diverted away to do it differently. So this would bring us into line um, and with the rest of the UK. As a matter of information, Minister, if I may, if I may intervene on you, uh, uh, have there been issues around the different uh, methods of, uh, uh, in these regards under the current legislation? Or is this a precaution against an, 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 uh, a, a possible uh, issue arising I, in the future? I, I, I'm, I'm told um, NHSBT would be very pleased if this amendment is um, passed because currently if someone has taken the decision to change their... their um, um, their, their, their registered view, um, either to, 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 to opt in or to opt out, um, they currently get turned away and often members of the public are not very happy when they're told that they can't do what everybody else can do. So. Indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, there are no other comments, so I will 
uh, therefore uh, put the question. The question is that Amendment 34 uh, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Um, we now move on to the next group on, in relation to the standard of evidence. Uh, and this includes uh, Amendment 35 in the name of the Minister, grouped with other amendments uh, as shown in the groupings. Uh, can I ask the Minister to move Amendment 35 and speak to all amendments in the group? Commissioner, in speaking to the Government amendments in this group, I wish to note Mr Rumble's interest in this aspect of the Bill. We met to discuss the amendments he lodged on this point and share the same aim to ensure that authorisation for transplantation isn't deemed where it would be against the potential donor's wishes and that has been the aim of the safeguards included in the Bill. We agreed to look further at this issue to see whether we could amend the test in the Bill to meet the concerns raised by Mr Rumbles. Amendment 38 seeks to do that and I'm pleased that we've uh, been able to find agreement. I'm grateful to Mr Rumbles uh, for withdrawing his amendments on that basis. Amendment 38 relates to the test to displace deemed authorisation for transplantation. As provided for the amendment um, to do this, a person must provide evidence to a health worker that would lead um, a reasonable person to conclude that the potential donor would have been unwilling to donate. This evidence would be about the potential donor's most recent view. The revised test also applies to establish whether a potential donor would have been unwilling in the circumstances to donate, perhaps because donation in that, that particular circumstance of death would be incompatible with their faith. The lead a reasonable person to conclude formulation would apply instead of the existing threshold in the bill, which requires evidence that would convince a reasonable person. I know the word convince was a specific concern that Mr Rumbles raised uh, when we met, and I'm glad to be able to address that concern. The change to conclude rather than convince is also in line with the wording in legislation in England and Wales. As a consequence of Amendment 38, Amendment 35 and 41 and Amendments 37 and 43 seek to replicate the lead a reasonable person to conclude test where an adult or child aged 12 or over has expressed authority or opted out of donation. The effect of this will be again to change the test in the bill with regards to the evidence required to show that the potential donor has changed their previous decision or to show that in the circumstances they would have changed their mind if they were capable of doing so. The test is being replicated in these contexts in order to reflect the intention that deemed authorisation should have equal status to other decisions and to avoid operational confusion about the application of different tests in different scenarios. I'd like to reassure the committee that the new test, as with the previous test, is designed to enable, in all circumstances, evidence about a potential donor's views to be brought forward and for their views to be determined whether or not donation is authorised. The test is robust enough to ensure that donation can only proceed where it would not have been against the potential donor's wishes and has been designed with the kind of decisions that take place with families by the bedside in mind. Operationally, evidence most frequently um, will most frequently be the family telling the specialist nurse for organ donation or tissue donor coordinator about the conversations that they have had about donation and what views their loved ones had expressed but it's flexible enough to be enable any kind of evidence to be produced. In addition to the test to establish views on donation, the revised test has also been applied with regards to incapacity, and Amendment 39 amends the example of when an adult is considered to be incapable of understanding the nature and consequences of deemed authorisation in new Section 64 of the 2006 Act. The effect of the new Section 62B is that deemed authorisation does not apply in relation to someone who is so incapable. So in practice, um, um, a specialist nurse or tissue donor coordinator will seek to establish whether a potential donor had the capacity to understand deemed authorisation. Staff who have been carrying out, carry, how, staff who have been caring for the patient are likely to be aware if the patient had a lack of capacity, but a potential donor's family member would also be able to provide evidence of incapacity. Although evidence is not required to establish incapacity, the example in the bill makes clear that where it is presented, it should lead a reasonable person to conclude that the potential donor was incapable of understanding the nature and consequences of authorisation. 
Convener, a great deal of consideration has been given to the tests in the, in the bill to ensure that information can be brought forward in order to respect a potential donor's wishes and to ensure that there are sufficient safeguards for those who are incapable of understanding the nature and consequences of deemed authorisation. I confirm that NHSBT and SNBTS were consulted and they are content with the approach in the bill on these issues and the associated amendments, and I ask members to support them on that basis. Turning to amendment, amendments 58, 59, 60 and 61, I am unable to support these amendments as they undermine the very principle of an opt-out system. Authorisation for donation for transplantation is able to be deemed in the context of the duties of Scottish ministers to raise awareness about the new system. If a person is made aware of how the system operates and that system operates on the basis of deemed authorisation, then we think it is reasonable to assume that an adult is willing to donate unless they opt out. We recognise that this assumption may be displaced in, in ways other than by an opt-out declaration, and if a person's most recent view is that they are unwilling to donate, then that should be given effect to as well. That is the reason for the safeguards in the Bill, and, and which ensure that the evidence about the adult's latest views can be brought forward. Importantly, the Bill provides that evidence of an adult's unwillingness to donate can be brought forward by a wide range of people to ensure that relevant information isn't excluded from consideration. Amendment 59 restricts the provisions of evidence to only the nearest relative, reducing the possibility that relevant information could be produced. The amendments taken together would mean that deemed authorisation only applies if evidence is provided by the nearest relative that a person is willing to donate. It destroys the basis of on which deemed authorisation operates, as there is no assumption of willingness. It has to be demonstrated and, to the nearest, by, and by the nearest relative. Crucially, these amendments could risk the progress we have seen um, under the 2006 Act. Currently, under Section 7 of the 2006 Act, which is to be repealed by this Bill, if an adult has not authorised donation, the nearest relative may authorise donation upon their death, unless they have actual knowledge that the adult was unwilling to donate. The opposite test to what these amendments propose. Part of the, the reason for the introduction of an opt-out system is because we know that many, many more people support donation than register their willingness to donate. That is why we want to move to a system of deemed authorisation, which makes donation the default position. We hope that provisions relating to deemed authorisation, together with the awareness raising about the new system, will contribute towards the ongoing improvements we have seen in donation rates. These amendments, however, would damage that progress and undermine the efforts of those working in the system to increase donation, and I urge members to resist them. I move Amendment 35. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, can, I now, can I welcome Gordon Lindhurst to the committee, and can I invite Gordon Lindhurst to speak to Amendment 58 and other amendments in this group? Um, thank you very much, Convener. And I have heard what the Minister has to say about amendments 58 to 61, but nevertheless, if I might set out the reasoning behind them. Um, these amendments relate to the formulation of the consent principle, and rather than it being a negative, indeed, as it's set out in the Bill, a double negative, the amendments change it to a positive. Um, this is in keeping with modern best practice, such as set out in the European Convention on Human Rights and Biomedicine, ETS 164, and its additional protocol concerning transplantation of organs and tissues of human origin, ETS 186. And I think the, the simplest uh, way to illustrate it is, for example, the most up-to-date European-based GDPR regulations, which require a conscious affirmative consent to be given in relation to personal data rather than the previously allowed passive consent. Um, as it is a, a probing amendment, it has been drafted in relation to one section only, if to be followed through with further amendments, would be brought at stage three in relation to the wording intended to be amended where appropriate in the rest of the bill. Thank you very much. And can I ask other members to indicate? Uh, I see Mike Rumbles. Th thank you very much, convener. Um, this set of amendments from the minister um, is all about the potential donor's wishes. And uh, it's about the safeguards in the bill that ensure that. And I'm absolutely delighted that uh, I was pleased to withdraw the amendments that I lodged on Friday because we reached uh, uh, an agreement with the minister on this. We're both 
agreed that we want to do the right thing here. And from my, just so that members know my, my background here, I've been on the organ donor register myself for the last 20 years. It was the first campaign I was involved with when I was elected to the Scottish Parliament. I was on the Health Committee previously when we took through the 2006 Act and spent many months, of course, with the convener being the, the minister at the time. Uh, and uh, when I saw the bill, I, I was supportive of it, except for this one phrase that was in the bill, um, which was to convince, convince a reasonable person, which was a particular standard of legal... Um, of law, which is used in many other bills, and I think that's what, what happened here. The legal team perhaps put that in the bill. And I have to say, um, it, in my view, the key amendment is Amendment 38, and the other amendments from the Minister are uh, setting the rest of the bill as a result of the Amendment 38. So I know I voted against it in Stage 1 because I was really worried about this word, convince. And I have to tell, I felt it was unintentionally, and it was clearly when I met the minister, unintentionally putting a barrier to the success of the bill. I was worried in case the, the, there might be a problem further down the line. What the minister has done is used the phrase, um, I need a reasonable person to conclude. And I, I want to put on record, because I do want to put it on record, uh, how pleased I was that the minister himself listened to the arguments, uh, accepted the arguments, and we are all want to achieve the right thing with this bill, and I just wanted to put that on the record. So I would hope that the committee would unanimously support the minister's amendments in this section. Very much. A, a reasonable person would conclude that Mr. Rumbles is supportive of those amendments. <laughs> can, can I ask if any other members, of the, any members of the committee, wish to comment on either group, either either of the sets of amendments within this group? If not, can I ask the minister to wind up? Kavina, the principle behind the bill is to respect the primacy of the views of the potential donor. That's why the safeguards are in the bill, to ensure it's their views which establish whether or not donation is authorised. Against the backdrop of, backdrop of the move to a soft opt-out system and the awareness raising that will take place, it's entirely appropriate to set the default in favour of donation where an adult hasn't opted out, with the safeguards in place as the, as the check to make sure donation um, wouldn't go ahead against the donor's wishes. I think this is the appropriate balance and the government amendments additionally have sought to address concerns that that might happen. I urge members to support amendments 35, 37, 38, 39, 41, 43 and to resist amendments 58, 59, 60 and 61. Thank you very much. The question is that amendment 35 be agreed. Are we all agreed? The question then is that section, section 5 of the bill be agreed. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Uh, call amendment 36 in the name of the minister already debated with amendment 34. Minister to move formally. Formally moved. Thank you very much. The question is that amendment 36 be agreed. Are we all agreed? agreed. Call amendment 37 in the name of the minister. Minister to move formally. Formally moved. Thank you very much. The question is that amendment 37 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Call Amendment 6 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with Amendment 5. Jeremy Balfour, to move or not move? Uh, not move. Thank you very much. Uh, the question then is that Section 6 of the Bill be agreed. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Call Amendment 7 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with Amendment 4. Uh, with sure. With not move. Oh, not move, sorry. Thank you very much. Um, and the, and I, the, I call Amendment 8 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with Amendment 4. Uh, not move. Thank you very much. Uh, these amendments are therefore withdrawn. I call Amendment 9 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with Amendment 5. Uh, can we now, just to be helpful, of, I don't know if it is helpful, but if it's possible, I'm happy to withdraw 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15... Well, Sorry. I can I can take you nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, because will, they are consecutive. With I will the withdraw bill. three then. Come with, so amendment nine, uh, amendment ten, and amendment eleven already debated are not moved. The committee are agreeable. Uh, therefore. Um, I, sorry, and Amendment 11, I think you also said, was not moved. Yep, it did. The quest, I therefore call Amendment 58 in the name of Gordon Lindhurst, already debated with Amendment 35. Gordon Lindhurst, to move or not moved? Um, well, I'm not sure the Minister uh, responded to my point, but I've, I'm not going to move that, that amendment. Amendment 58, uh, 58 is not moved. 
I call Amendment 59 in the name of Gordon Lindhurst. Um, again, convener for the assist, I'm not going to move any of these amendments. Call Amendment 38 in the name of the Minister. Already debate with Amendment 35. Moved. Uh, that is moved. The question is that Amendment 38 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Uh, we now come to Amendment 60 and 61 in the name of Gordon Lindhurst. I take it from your previous comment, these are not moved. That is correct. Convener. Amendment 60 is not moved. Amendment 61 is not moved. If the committee is agreeable. Then call Amendment 39 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 35. Moved. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 39 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Agreed. Call Amendment... I come now to Amendment 12 in the name of Jeremy Balfour. Uh, Jeremy Balfour to move or not move? Uh, not move. Thank you very much. That is not moved. The question then is that Section 7 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The question is that sections 8 and 9 of the bill be agreed to. Are we all agreed? I call amendment 13 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated, uh, to move or not to move? Uh, not move. Thank you very much. Amendment 13 is not moved. Uh, the question then is that uh, section 11 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Sorry, section, my apologies. Uh, section 10 is agreed to. Are we all agreed? The question is, does Section 11 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Uh, I now call Amendment 40 in the name of the Minister. Already debated. Minister to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 40 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Call Amendment 41 in the name of the Minister. Already debated. Minister to move formally. Moved. Uh, the question is that Amendment 41 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Question is that section 12 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? agreed. Call amendment 42 in the name of the minister. Uh, already debated. Minister to move formally. Moved. Uh, question is that amendment 42 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? agreed. Call amendment 43 in the name of the minister. Already debated. Moved. Uh, the question is that amendment 43 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The question is that section 13 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The question is that sections 14 to 20 inclusive are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. And we then move to the next group, uh, which is uh, removal of body parts further requirements. And can I call amendment 44 in the name of the minister, group with amendments 45 to 49 <coughs> inclusive. The minister to move amendment 44 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I'm bringing amendments 44 to 49 following an approach by the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service who are responsible for tissue retrieval. SNBTS is seeking the opportunity to amend section 21 of the bill, which amends section 11 of the Human Tissue Scotland Act 2006 um, and concerns the requirements which must be satisfied before retrieval takes place. The amendments brought forward are intended to amend section 11.1 to 11.4 of the 2006 Act to clarify the role of the registered medical practitioner in, in cases where another person has been authorised to retrieve tissue. The amendments will allow SNBTS to operate more effectively and to be responsive to practice, practice development. Section 11.1 of the 2006 Act provides that removal of a body part for transplantation must be undertaken by a registered medical practitioner or someone authorised to do so in accordance with regulations. Regulations can provide that a registered medical practitioner to authorise the removal by a non-practitioner. The current um, regulation provides that a registered medical practitioner may authorise any person provided that they are satisfied that the person undertaking the retrieval is sufficiently qualified and trained to perform the operation competently. Amendments 44, 45 and 47 to 49 will amend section 11 of the 2006 Act to make it clear that the body parts of a deceased person may be removed by a person who is authorised to do so under a general authorisation made in accordance with regulations and enable the regulations to make provision about general authorisations for a description of persons. The amendments also remove section 113B of the 2006 Act, which implies that authorisation must be given in individual cases and ensures that it is only the person who proposes to remove the body parts who is required to be satisfied that the requirements of section 114 of the 2006 Act are met. Amendment 46 will amend 
section 114A of the 2006 Act, so that, they are, that where the person proposing to remove a body part from a donor is a registered medical practitioner, that person may examine the donor's body to confirm the donor is deceased, or satisfy themselves that another registered medical practitioner has examined the donor's body to confirm the donor is deceased. Amendment 46 will also add a new paragraph AB to section 114 of the 2006 Act, so that where the person proposing to remove a body part from a donor is not a registered medical practitioner, that person must satisfy themselves that a registered medical practitioner has examined the donor's body to confirm the donor is deceased. Ask the committee to agree to amendments 44 to 49, which will allow SNBTS to continue to respond effectively to in increases in tissue retrieval. And I move amendment 44. Thank you very much, Minister. Can I invite any other members of the committee who wish to uh, comment on any of these amendments? Uh, Sandra White. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. And I fully support. I just want a piece of clarification on Amendment 46 when it mentions the fact that, you know, uh, exam personal examination of the body is satisfied that life is extinct uh, and that a registered medical practitioner uh, also doesn't have to be a registered practitioner. A medical practitioner. In what way would that be? I presume that someone would examine it first and uh, they would go to them and they would get paper, you know, authorisation from a registered medical practitioner. I just want to be a bit of clarification of 46. Thank you very much. Are there any other members who wish to comment or seek clarification before uh, I invite the Minister to respond? Um, if not, uh, Minister. So I, I think the kind of point from my, my contribution earlier was that you know it, the person that is removing the organ needs to be satisfied that another registered medical practitioner, so that could be the hospital, has examined the donor's body to confirm that the donor is deceased. Um, so I mean, it's confirming that that will be done. It, it's it's about making sure that the bill works in practice and doesn't. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. You have no further comments uh, to add to those. Uh, at this stage. In that case, the question is that Amendment 44 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Call Amendment 45 in the name of the Minister. Minister to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 45 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Call Amendment 46 in the name of the Minister. Uh, Minister to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 46 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, call Amendment 14. In the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated. Jeremy Balfour to move or not move? No move. Thank you very much. That amendment is not moved. And I call Amendment 47 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 44. Minister moved. to move. Thank you very much. Question is that Amendment 47 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Call Amendment 48 in the name of the Minister. Uh, moved. Sorry. Question is that Amendment 48 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you very much. Call Amendment... 15 in the name of Jeremy. Jeremy. Withdraw. With, not moved. Not moved. Thank you very much. Call Amendment 49 in the name of the Minister. Moved. Question is that Amendment 49 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, call Amendment 16 in the name of Jeremy Balfour. Yes. Thank you very much. The question, therefore, is that Section 21 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you very much. We then move on to the section, the, sorry, the grouping, which relates to. Uh, Pre-death procedures relating to transplantation. Uh, can I call Amendment 50 in the name of the Minister, which is grouped with Amendments 51 and 18? Minister, to move Amendment 50 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I'll speak to Amendments 50 and 51, which make minor amendments to the provision about pre-death procedures in the Bill. These amendments are aimed at ensuring the provisions will work effectively when applied in practice. The provisions in the Bill will support the carrying out of pre-death procedures um, are robust and provide a clear legal framework in providing the circumstances when they may be carried out and when they must be authorised. Transparency is important to this and Amendment 50 will enable the procedures which may be specified as Type A to be described more accurately by making it clear that they may also be described by reference to how they are carried out. The ability to specify the procedure procedures and regulations also ensures that the statutory framework is responsive to changes in practice and particularly to developments in medical practice and care. 
The minor change introduced by Amendment 50 to the enabling power further enhances this. Amendment 51 will also make it clearer how the system is intended to work in practice. As the committee is aware, pre-death procedures aren't new. Those currently carried out in, in including, include taking blood and carrying out x-rays, and it's not intended that, for example, a radiographer who is asked to carry out an x-ray has to be involved in the authorisation process, nor carry out the duty to inquire. This amendment makes this clear, while also retaining important safeguards provided in the bill, including that the procedures cannot be carried out if it is known that the person was unwilling for it to be carried out. I hope that members um, share my, my aim to ensure that the bill works in practice, and I therefore invite members to support these amendments. Uh, and I move Amendment 50. I'd also like to speak to Amendment 18 and understand Mr Balfour's concerns that carrying out pre-death procedures should not bring about the premature death of a potential donor. As I've mentioned, the provisions in the bill which support the carrying out of pre-death procedures are robust and include significant safeguards around how and when they can be carried out. Importantly, these include that they should not be carried out if it is likely to cause more than minimal discomfort or harm to the person. And I believe that not shortening life expectancy would be captured by the requirement not to harm. Of equal importance, the bill also explicitly provides that procedures can only be carried out if, in the view of those responsible for the patient's care, the person is likely to die imminently and where life-saving treatment is being uh, administered, a decision has been taken to withdraw the treatment. This takes account of the very specific context in which they are carried out. It's a very narrow window at the very end of a patient's life where they are being cared for by medical professionals with family involvement in discussions about care and end of life. I'm satisfied that the bill includes significant safeguards and I'm not persuaded of the need for this amendment. I, I hope I've provided uh, sufficient reassurance and invite Jeremy Balfour to withdraw Amendment 18. Thank you very much. Can I invite Jeremy Balfour to speak to Amendment 18 and other amendments in the group? Uh, thank you, um, Commissioner. Uh, firstly, just to say I am supportive of, of Amendments 50 and 51 um, in the Minister's name. Um, I mean, I think my Amendment 18 simply puts down in law, what should happen and what we all hope should happen. But I think the thinking behind it, from my perspective, is that it gives those individuals who decide to opt in an absolutely guarantee that they will be treated no differently from uh, those who haven't opted in, opted in. Now, I think that will happen anyway, but I think it gives that absolute legal um, requirement. And I, I don't think this takes away from anything that the Minister is moving in his two amendments, um, I don't think it makes any difference, hopefully in practice, uh, for the medical teams. But I do think there has been, perhaps in the past, slight concern that people are treated slightly differently if they um, are on the donor list or the not on the donor list. This absolutely just clarifies that that isn't the case. Um, and thus, I do think it is a, a safeguard which will give people a, assurance to go on to the list after all, which is what we want uh, people to do. So um, that is the reasoning uh, behind my Amendment 18. Thank you very much. Uh, can I invite other members uh, of the committee? Uh, Emma Harper. Um, having worked in transplant at both the donation side and the recipient side, it's a really, really difficult situation. And in my professional uh, working life, I've never seen anybody uh, wish to um, hurry up somebody's death so we can get them to an organ donation um, site or operating theatre. So um, I think this amendment, although well intended, isn't required because of the the the, the way that current healthcare practice is delivered across Scotland. Thank you very much. Are there other members? Uh, Sandra White. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I, I thank the Minister for the amendments. This is an area which I had raised from the very beginning. Uh, being a lay person, I, I didn't know a lot about pre-death procedures and having met with uh, various uh, people you know, whose uh, loved ones had passed away and seen what had happened and the information that they got, I was comforted but still raised the various questions. And I thank the Minister for pushing it forward in a type A category. 
and also the transparency you're talking about and the families are going to be involved. And that was always my concern that we didn't know a lot about what was happening. Um, I can understand Jeremy Balfour bringing it forward. I think it's probably just a probing amendment and maybe it'll another not moved. I'm not sure, I can't speak for Jeremy. But uh, I'm very pleased with these amendments and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments? If not, um, can I invite the Minister to wind up? As I said earlier, the Bill is setting out provisions about pre-death procedures which are robust, transparent and responsive to change and the important aim that they can work in practice. Amendment 1551 are minor changes which further add to this again. And again, I invite the committee to support them. Safeguards are important and the provisions in the Bill about pre-death procedures have been carefully developed to ensure that they recognise the particular circumstances in which they are carried out. People will be under the care of health professionals who work within an ethical framework and where patient care is a priority. The Bill also provides that procedures may only be carried out if necessary and are not likely to cause any harm, which I'm satisfied addresses Jeremy Balfour's concerns. I therefore urge the committee to reject Amendment 18. Thank you very much. Uh, the question is that Amendment 50 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, call Amendment 51. The name of the Minister already debated. The Minister to formally move. Moved. The question is that Amendment 51 <coughs> be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Uh, call Amendment 17 in the name of Jeremy Balfour already debated with Amendment 5. Jeremy Balfour to move or not move? Not move. Thank you very much. Call Amendment 18 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with Amendment 50. Jeremy Balfour to move or not move? Uh, move. Moved. Um, the, qu the question is uh, that Amendment 18 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Um, that seems to me to be clear. Are there any uh, votes in favour of Amendment 18? There are not. Uh, that therefore is not agreed. Thank you very much. We'd better have a vote against, just to be absolutely clear. Can I see those voting against Amendment 18? Thank you very much. Amendment 18 is not agreed. The question is that Section 22 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. We move then to the next grouping, which relates to the meaning of health worker. Uh, can I call Amendment 52 in the name of the Minister, uh, grouped with Amendments 53 and 54. Minister, to move 52 and speak to all amendments in the group. Kofina, I'll speak to Amendments 52 to 54, which seek to change the definition of health worker in the Bill. Following the Bill's introduction and after speaking to key people who deliver donation and transplantation services, we've reviewed how the definition of health worker currently in the Bill will work in practice and are of the view that these amendments are necessary. To be able to work properly in practice, we consider that there needs to be more flexibility in the definition of health worker in the Bill. The definition should also consistently apply to those who may be involved in the authorisation process and those <coughs> excuse me, who may be carrying out inquiries into potential donors' wishes, which is likely to be the same person. This is also relevant to pre-death procedures as other people working in healthcare who might not be a registered medical practitioner nor registered nurse might be involved. For example, a radiographer who might carry out x-rays would be covered by the current definition. Our view is that the amendment achieves the appropriate level of flexibility by enabling health workers not only to be clinicians or nurses but also others who are suitably qualified. We think this also this also precise enough to maintain appropriate restrictions as to who can fulfil the health worker role in the different contexts in which it applies and with the additional powers for ministers to issue direction it also <coughs> includes adequate safeguards to maintain the integrity of the process. Importantly, as we all know, practice and procedures develop all the time. We're mindful that the system has to work in practice so our view is that amendments are also responsive enough to allow for further development in procedures and practice. I therefore ask members to support amendments 52, 53 and 54 and convener I move amendment 52. Thank you very much. Can I invite any member who wishes to comment on these amendments? If not, have you any final comment? Uh, we will therefore move directly to the vote. The question is that amendment 52 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. And the question is that section 23 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? And the question is that <coughs> sections 24 and 25 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. 
Uh, call Amendment 53 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 52. Moved. Uh, the question is uh, that Amendment 53 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? I call Amendment 19 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with Amendment 5. <laughs> no, it's not for you. You may if you wish, Minister, but you may not. Um, we suspend for a moment. Uh, Jeremy Balfour will, I understand, be back with us any second. Right. Uh, call Amendment 19 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, uh, already debated with Amendment 5. Jeremy Balfour to move or not move? Uh, not move. Thank you very much. Um, call Amendment 54 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 52. Moved. The question is that Amendment 54 be agreed to, are we all agreed? The question is that tw uh, Section 26 be agreed to, are we all agreed? Uh, call Amendment 20 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with Amendment 5. No moves. Thank you very much. The quest, um, call Amendment 21, and I may um, call these on block, Amendments 21, 22 and 23 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with Amendment 5. No moved, Camina, and thank you. Not moved. Thank you very much. Uh, the question then is that Section 27 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Um, we now come to uh, the group with one amendment, which is in my name, on review and report on operation of the Act. This again follows uh, some discussions and reflects on the experience elsewhere. Amendment 62 inserts a new section to the Bill, placing an obligation on Ministers to research and report upon the impact of the provisions so as to determine the efficacy of the Act. Um, the, it imposes a duty to undertake a review and report back to Parliament. A similar exercise was carried out in Wales with the evaluation published in December 2017. However, that was done uh, so close to the passage of the Bill uh, or of the Act that the evidence uh, of the benefits did not appear in that evaluation. Uh, and the committee, committee members will recall that we heard that follow, in the 12 months following the publication of that evaluation, the evidence began to come through of an increase. Therefore, this amendment is designed uh, to ensure that there is adequate period, uh, a period of five years, uh, beginning with the day of royal assent. And I move section 62 in my name. And before inviting the minister, I would invite any comments from other members. Alex Colham. Um, thank you, convener. Um, I'd just like to seek some additional clarification because whilst Generally, I'm in favour of reviewing the impact of legislation. I am concerned because this uh, um, bill is so needed um, that it might open the door for it to be um, repealed or reversed. So I just want to, to check your kind of motivations behind that and uh, give assurances that you didn't, you wouldn't imagine that that would be the case. I will be happy to do so when I have the opportunity in a moment. Um, are there other members who wish to uh, make comment? Um, uh, Emma Harper, sorry. Just a, a quick point. Thank you, convener, that I agree that if we are looking at increasing the number of people that are registered on the uh, opt-in system or whether we see that opt-out actually might increase, um, we should be able to review the bill to see whether it's working or not. Thank you very much. Minister. Thank you, Kavira. In supporting Amendment 62, um, I am uh, content that this is not a so-called sunset clause, and, and I'm happy on that basis to re recommend its acceptance today. 
Um, however, I think it would be preferable to amend the start of the review period so that it begins not at royal assent, but at the date of introduction of the opt-out system. And I'm suggesting this on the basis of the experience that the convener mentioned from the, the Welsh Government, where evaluation which concluded um, that two years of data were not enough to give an indication of the um, early impact of the design. And I think five years after um, introduction of the system feels like the right length of time. So I'm happy to work, obviously, with the convener um, um, before stage three to achieve that. Thank you very much. And uh, in winding up, I, th those, th that uh, uh, suggestion is much appreciated and ha likewise happy to uh, uh, do so, uh, as with the previous amendment we discussed. And I hope Alex Hall Hamilton will agree with the Minister that uh, th there is no uh, intention here and no real uh, route here for this to become a sunset clause. The intention is simply to ensure review. I'll take an intervention. Uh, I think on that clarification, I'd be happy to support the amendment. Thank you very much. Um, I will press that amendment. Can I therefore ask the question that Amendment 62 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Uh, we now move to the uh, another group comprising one amendment only, which is uh, on commencement. Can I call Amendment 55 in the name of the Minister? Minister to move. Convener, um, in, in, in speaking to Amendment 55, uh, which seeks to remove reference to certain sections of the Bill from Section 28 so that they are not commenced the day after Royal Assent. Following the Bill's introduction and engagement with uh, key, the key stakeholders, including NHSBT and SNBTS, we have reviewed the approach in, in the Bill as introduced and consider that this amendment is necessary. This is to ensure there is sufficient time for guidance to be produced and training to be provided to ensure the pre-death procedures and timing of authorisation provisions can be implemented successfully and so those working in the system are able to adhere to the new legislative framework. Uh, further, following the introduction of the bill, sequencing issues were also identified that make this amendment necessary. Before the pre-death procedures regime can fully be implemented, the regulations um, specifying the types of procedures need to be in place, so it would be unworkable to commence the provisions for the regime before that process is complete. Otherwise, the regime would be in place, but the procedures would not be specified and so could not be carried out. This also has a, an effect on the duties to raise awareness about pre-death procedures, which cannot be met if the procedures are not yet specified. It is the Scottish Government's intention to instead commence these and the remaining provisions in the Bill by commencement regulations. As set out in the public consultation and the Bill's accompanying documents, the intention is to carry out awareness raising over at least 12 months following the introduction of the opt-out system. And as I've said previously, I think that at least 12 months awareness raising is appropriate given, given the increased exposure of debate about opt-outs across the UK since it was introduced in Wales in 2015 and more recently the start of the 12-month awareness raising period in England, which will inevitably have some reach in Scotland. Convener, I move Amendment 55. Thank you very much. Uh, can I see if other members wish to uh, contribute in uh, commenting on this amendment? If not, uh, Minister, you have no further points to add. The question is that Amendment 55 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Uh, we now come to Amendment 63 in my name, already debated with Amendment 4. Uh, I do not intend to uh, move uh, Amendment 63. If members are content, we will move on. The question is that Section 28 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. And finally, we come to uh, uh, an, uh, another group of a single amendment. This is an amendment again in my name and again a reflecting discussion with the Law Society really around the uh, short title of the bill. Clearly, it is a bill to amend the Human Tissue Scotland Act and therefore uh, it should start with human tissue. Um, uh, and, and, and that's a... a, a that is there. There is no reference currently in the short title to transplantation, uh, given that uh, when it comes to newspaper comment and other public comment, it is the short title that uh, is referred to. Uh, this was simply a, a suggestion that might improve the clarity and use the title of the bill itself as a means of raising awareness of its content. And I move uh, that amendment in my name. Can I invite other members of the committee who may uh, wish to comment, uh, and if not, can I invite the Minister? Here, I am grateful to you for your attention uh, to the detail of the Bill, and, um, but I am resisting Amendment 64, which seeks to amend the short title. 
We take care in selecting titles of bills to ensure that they meet the presiding officer's recommendation that titles should be accurate and neutral, neutrally reflect what the bill does. Adding reference to transplantation to the short title was considered during development of the legislation, but that was not added because it was felt it would uh, be potentially misleading to readers who might think the bill was only about transplantation. The short title of the bill reflects that the bill is also about authorisation of donation for other purposes, not only transplantation. And this is further reflected in the long title, which sets out that the bill is about authorisation for transplantation and other purposes. It seems to me that transplantation is given sufficient prominence in that way in the long title. The bill does make significant changes to authorisation for transplantation by, reducing deemed, by introducing uh, deemed authorisation for that purpose, but it also ensures that authorisation for other important uses, research, education or training or audit or quality assurance will require express authorisation from a potential donor or by the nearest relatives. The current short title of the bill acknowledges this, so whilst I understand why um, Mr Macdonald has raised this issue, I would ask him to consider not pressing Amendment 64. Thank you very much. Uh, in light of the Minister's comment, I am minded not to press this amendment at this stage. It is, of course, open to uh, members to revisit the issue at Stage 3. Uh, I am committed content that I do not press and withdraw this amendment. Thank you very much. The question then is that section 29 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. The question is that the long title be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. That completes stage two consideration of the bill. Can I thank the minister and his team for uh, their attendance and members and non-members of the committee. Uh, the bill will now be reprinted as amended at stage two uh, uh, and members will be informed in due course when a date has been selected and when amendments can be submitted for stage three. Thank you very much. We will now uh, suspend briefly and then go and we will resume in private session uh, in five minutes' time. Thank you very much.